Okay, this lecture is going to address social work as a profession and a program of study. So, um, the social work is defined as the applied science of helping people achieve an effective level of psychosocial functioning and affecting societal changes to enhance the well-being of all people, and that's pulled from Barker. And ASW, the National Association of Social Workers definition, is the idea of social work as a profession promotes social change, problem solving, and the empowerment and liberation of people to enhance their well-being. And the focus is on human rights and human justice um, and, and kind of social justice that way. In terms of the um, NESW from the working statement on our, our purpose as a profession, the focus is to improve fo social functioning and social conditions. And as goals, we are working to enhance social functioning, linking clients with resources, improving kind of the delivery of those services, and of course promoting social justice, which often happens through social policies. Our social work mission is enhancing, again, well-being, kind of looking at the well-being of the individual and their social functioning, but also looking at society as a whole. And I think what makes, um, for me, what drew me most to social work was two things. One, this idea of this person in, in their environment, or what we call PI, and that's something you may have um, heard about in your um, human behavior class. And so it's not just looking at the individual um, and maybe their um, behavior issue. Maybe there's a child who has a behavioral issue in, issue in school, but it's looking at that child and that behavior, and it's looking at the school setting and the family setting and perhaps their neighborhood and community and involved in, in kind of the larger involvement that way. So recognizing that it's um, kind of the individual is in a context and that we need to kind of think about these environmental forces that maybe create and contribute to and um, work to address those um, issues in order to, uh, to help the client solve the, the um, problem. So um, again, a child with a behavioral problem in school, it may be a larger issue that way. And so again, looking at both the individuals, again, in that social context and the well-being of the society as a whole. And so that's what we talk about, kind of this dual focus. Um, the second thing that kind of drew me to social work was this eclectic kind of knowledge base, um, looking at um, our values as a profession, but also many different theories that guide our practice. And there's many theories that you have perhaps started to learn about in your other courses, um, perhaps human behavior or will learn about. Um, but um, there's so many theorists, you know, if you think about some of the, the child theorists, um, Piaget, and um, as an example, and um, of course, there's cognitive behavioral therapy or behavioral therapy um, or behavioral theorists and um, cognitive behavioral theorists and motivational enhancement theory. Um, and so kind of all of these theories guide our practice. And so there isn't just one way of looking at things, um, but these theories um, guide our practice help us think about the interventions to take with our clients, that we're seeing a change for our clients at many different levels, um, and that we're doing that both through helping a client directly, maybe individually working with them, or perhaps even through um, policies. Um, we're helping a policy that, um, we're promoting a policy that changes um, the support for, um, or supports the organization that's um, kind of treating that client. And of course, research is guiding our practice. We're looking at working with um, client systems at all levels and working with um, many different organizations. So again, I think what drew me is this idea of the person in the environment that we're looking at, not just kind of that child's behavior, but that whole larger picture. And then that um, in terms of this generalist social work practice, there's these different theories that are guiding our practice and um, we kind of pull from many of them and of course our professional values and ethics guiding our practice. Um, that's kind of what we'll be talking about. Um, you can be doing this um, um, working with clients individually um, or up in um, kind of in between the, the meso level or be working with clients um, on, a, on a larger perspective in terms of bringing about a, a social change, maybe in a community level <clears throat> or a neighborhood or in a society. 
So I think, again, what you can do with social work is, is that you can work to apply all these different theories to the individual level or kind of the macro level, the larger level. And as social workers, we may have many, we have many different roles. And these are just kind of naming a few here as advocates and educators, um, counselors, brokers, or mediators. Um, but we also are oftentimes playing many different roles. And I think that's um, what's amazing about social work is, is that you can be working with many different populations. You can also be working in many different roles. And in one day, you may have a role of advocate and educator or uh, mediator and counselor. And so each day is different because of that, because of the, of the work that you're doing. Um, each day is different because of, um, of where of the role that you're playing. I guess I wanted to tie all of this in terms of when we think about general social work practice and um, kind of the theories that are guiding our practice is that I'm not sure where this course is in, in your um, sequence of courses. Um, the, our core curriculum is the human behavior and the social environment, social welfare policy, research, and of course, social work practice methods course and field. So whether you're taking this as your first course or you're taking this corresponding with a policy and or human behavior course, you're learning many different um, kind of concepts. But I don't want you to think about these courses as individual columns of learning or individual towers of learning um, because th that that's not our intent. Our intent is, is that this should be an integrated curriculum. So what you're learning in human behavior you can apply here in 240. What you're um, learning here in 240 you can take and apply to um, your policy classes. Of course all along you're um, learning about research and guiding you know gaining scholarly sources. So your research, you're going to be guiding your practice in your other coursework as well. So again, kind of thinking about this, these courses are not just individual towers of work to be done, but are this integrated um, concept and curriculum that are helping you be a better social worker. And if you can, can if you can start to think about that process of integrating that and keeping that all connected and applying it to many different classes and, and many different ideas that you're learning, you can be a better um, student and a better social worker that way. And again, when you get out there in the field, you'll be doing the same thing. You're constantly kind of taking in information from your clients and from your setting and from your, um, from the, from your readings or from your research and um, kind of molding yourself and applying that. So who are we as social workers? Um, we are a profession. Um, certainly we have a knowledge base and a skill set. We have to adhere to specific values and ethics of our profession. Um, we are working to empower, um, to make changes. We're working with others, partnering with clients and colleagues and other agencies to make changes. Since we are a, are a profession that way, we are um, licensed. We are a licensed professional and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But let's start talking about kind of what guides us as a profession in terms of our ethics. The NASW has established kind of a professional um, code of ethics for us. And it really is a framework to guide our ethical decision making. It's not going to tell you what to do in every situation and that's where ethical decision making kind of comes in. But it's kind of this abstract guide um, for you to start, um, for us to be a the, the best in terms of our profession or providing the best services as a profession. Um, there are several principles that are guiding our practice. The service, which is helping those in who are in need. Social justice, which is per pursuing social change and challenging injustices that we see. The dignity and worth of a person, which is respecting our client's right to choose what is best for them. We can't make them do what we think is best. The importance of human relationships, that we as a person are making a connection with others and that working relationship is what oftentimes makes brings about a change. Um, the idea of integrity, being truthful about kind of our capabilities and our competence and also um, maintaining confidentiality and certainly maintaining our competence, being a competent and practicing within our skill set and knowledge base. We are kind of bound to um, um, our clients, our colleagues, our practice settings, 
um, our other professionals, uh, our social work profession, and the broader society. So you can see how sometimes our code of ethics can be in conflict, um, whether it be providing a service and the um, dignity and worth of a, of a client may be in conflict, or um, kind of providing a service to a client versus making sure we're kind of providing the service in our practice setting. So we'll talk more about kind of ethical dilemmas in a future um, date, but th again, thinking about kind of our code of ethics that way as a start. Um, UMBC is an accredited social work program, and um, we are one of 474. We are actually one of the larger social work programs in the country, and um, this just reviews kind of different accreditation and what's kind of out there. If you're thinking about pursuing a, a, a further degree, a graduate degree, you definitely want to be looking at accredited programs. Many students want to move on to what we call advanced standing, and admissions to the advanced standing is through a selective and competitive process. Students must have a BSW from an accredited program. They must have the established GPA from the school that they're applying to, and they need a recommendation typically from the entire faculty. And as faculty, we're looking at kind of your professionalism, performance in class and field. Um, you may also need to complete additional studies um, or other coursework. A lot of students kind of want to know about their employment opportunities. So here, um, you definitely you're going to be needed out there in 2020 um, in terms of kind of uh, job growth that way. Or And this is from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Some students also want to know kind of salary that way. I know I didn't actually pursue social work um, in terms of making money. It was more a passion for me. But um, I think what I've learned is, is that you need to um, be kind of savvy and figure out what your skill set is and kind of be have a marketable skill set. And that will allow you to gain more income and earn, and earn more. Different employment opportunities in the in private practice, in um, voluntary, in, in non I'm sorry, in nonprofit and pro profit for profit organizations. A lot of government grants and, and government agencies in private practice is certainly an option too. Licensure, you definitely need to obtain a license. Um, so the ASWB, the Association of Social Work Boards, um, prepares the examinations and study guides and authorizes people for licensure. Um, there's two type of laws that kind of, this helps us as social workers, so it forbids those who are not licensed or certified by the board to use the title of social worker. And in order to maintain our license, we need to continue to take continuing ed, which are the CEUs noted at the bottom. This is Maryland's kind of guide for licensure, and um, there's different levels of licensure at the BSW all the way up to the MSW and doctorate degree. Um, so a lot of students are kind of working towards the LCSWC. I will say in terms of I do have my um, LCSWC, and it has afforded me more opportunities, and so if that's what you're kind of working towards, it's a great goal. Um, you want to be thinking about kind of getting there um, through your work and through your experiences that way. But I think as a profession, it's really important um, that we think about our profession as a whole and kind of how um, um, maintaining our professionalism, I guess, is what I want to say. Um, and so um, the LCSWC, I think we have, and, and the LCSW also, we, we as a profession have gained um, more uh, credit, I guess, that way in terms of insurance companies in the past. Maybe we didn't always get reimbursed for different services, but now we are. And so I think that is, is, is allowing our profession to gain um, more credit that way. And that's something we want to keep pursuing. Um, and again, that's why we want to keep our ethical standards and keep with our ethical profession so that we as a profession can keep advancing. That concludes this lecture. Thank you so much and have a good day.